Calculus, minimize time, swimming and walking. Since I've been teaching with this calculus curriculum for now going on 10 years, I've been intrigued by these optimization problems. These are real world uses of calculus, and in particular this one. We have a situation where we have a swimmer who is one mile out in the ocean and wishes to get to town three miles down the coast, which is very rocky. He needs to swim to the shore and then walk along the shore. What point should I swim to along the shoreline so the time it takes to get to town is at a minimum. I swim at two miles per hour and walk at four miles per hour. We are trying to minimize the time. And if you look, a swimmer swimming directly to town at two miles per hour is thought experiment wise going to take quite a bit more time than going directly to shore and then going along the shoreline. And so that there's going to be some point at some angle theta that's going to be the optimum time-wise going along the diagonal path and then along the shore. So let's go ahead and look at what's going on here. Okay, let's identify these distances first. This one distance here from along the shoreline and the point perpendicular to the location of the swimmer to the town is three miles and the distance from the landing place to the town is going to be quantity 3 minus x. So that's going to be that distance. Now, what we're going to have is this swimming distance what is that distance going to be? Well, a formula for that would be perhaps the most famous formula in all of mathematics, the Pythagorean Theorem. a squared, and we'll let a equal 1, and b squared, we'll just have b equal to x. So we have 1 squared plus x squared equals c squared. And so what we're going to have is 1, I'll say x squared plus 1 equals c squared. So what does c equal? c is going to be equal to the square root of quantity x squared plus 1. And so now we have the expressions accounting for the distances. Now for time. I swim at two miles per hour. Well, how do we change that to time? Well, that's going to be one half hour for each mile. And four miles per hour, that's going to be one quarter hour per mile. So we're going to use these values in creating a primary equation for time. Well, the time is going to be equal to the, we're going to take care of the, the swimming first, one half hour per mile. So we're going to have one half this quantity here, which is square root of quantity x squared plus one. And we are going to add to that one fourth times the distance along the shoreline, which is going to be three minus x. And what I want to do is write this in what I would call more calculus friendly form. I'm going to write this first expression here as one half times quantity x squared plus one to the one-half power. And 
And then we're going to distribute this 1 fourth to be 3 fourths minus x over 4. Now we're going to take the derivative of time. So the derivative of time, which we're going to call t prime, is equal to 1 half. And then to take the derivative of this quantity x squared plus 1 to 1 half power, we multiply by the exponent, which is 1 half. And then we bring this x squared plus 1 now to the negative one-half power, power rule of differentiation, times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And taking the derivative of 3 fourths, or any constant, is 0. And the derivative of negative x over 4 is going to be negative 1 fourth. And now simplifying this t prime, we have t prime is equal to, we have the, we have 2, as in 2x in the, 2 in the numerator, and this, this 2 down below. So what we're going to have left is x over 2 times quantity x squared plus 1 equals not equals minus one fourth. And now we're going to find the critical number. And to find critical numbers where the derivative is equal to zero or is undefined. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. So zero is equal to x over 2 square root of quantity x squared plus 1 minus 1 fourth. And to solve, now for x, we're going to add 1 fourth to both sides of the equation. So we have 1 fourth is equal to x over 2 times quantity x squared plus 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn each of these fractions upside down in the process of solving. So on the left side we're going to rewrite that as 4. And on the right side we're going to rewrite that as 2 square root of quantity x squared plus 1. And we're going to divide that by x. And when we cross multiply the x, I'm going to bring this up. I'm going to leave some room up here. Make this little arrow. We cross multiply the x. We get 4x is equal to 2 times quantity x squared plus 1. And now dividing both sides of this equation by 2, what we have left is 2x equals the square root of quantity x squared plus 1. And now we're going to square both sides of this equation and so doing, we are going to, on the left side, have 4x squared. And on the right side, we're going to have x squared plus 1. And now subtracting x squared from both sides of the equation, we have 3x squared is equal to 1. And now dividing by 3, x squared is equal to 1 third. And taking the square root of both sides, x is going to be equal to plus or minus. But since we're dealing with distance here, we're just going to have the plus version of this. We have 1 over square root of 3. 
and that is the distance x. So x is equal to 1 over square root of 3 miles and the angle, by the way, the angle is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of, of 1 over square root of 3 and that's going to be the angle pi over 6. So we have not only the distance, we have the, the angle. And, and I say the inverse tangent of 1 over pi over 3 because if you look at this angle here, the opposite side is 1 over square root of 3 and the adjacent side is 1. So that's going to be our distance equals 1 over square root of 3 miles. Anyway, I, th I hope this is an interesting problem. I thought it was interesting. Good luck, and as always, thanks for viewing.